Hey everyone, uh, once again, welcome back. Uh, this video has been uh, kind of some time in the making. I went to Cannibal Cave a few weeks ago and um, I've been trying to get this video out. Uh, the map you see here is uh, uh, easily and readily available online. I, uh, uh, the red line is uh, um, the indication of the video that's coming up here. Uh, and where uh, I started this dive. Uh, that red line consists of pretty much this, this very low um, area that you have to crawl through. The current coming out of here is really, really strong. Um, you can't swim against it. You literally have to pull and push your way through using your arms and your feet. Uh, it's a little bit of a challenge the first couple times you do it until you kind of have the process down and then it's not a big deal. Um, it's about, oh, I don't know, about 50, 50 to 80 feet or so um, of this um, it's kind of a bedding plane area. And um, once you get past it, the flow uh, is pretty much non-existent. You do kind of feel it a little bit. You know that it's there, but it's nothing that's uh, that's really overwhelming or hard to swim against or anything like that. Um, I find these bedding planes and crawling through them kind of fun and cool. Uh, it gives me a sense of, uh, you know, like I'm a real explorer, even though many, many people have been here before and it's mapped out and uh, you know that's the uh, advantage I have about diving these places. I know I can go in and make it out uh, relatively uh, unscathed. Uh, so there you saw the warning sign. Of course always heed those warning signs. There's nothing in a cave worth dying for. Um, so here's that map again. I added another section of red line. Um, that's uh, after entering that bedding plane and reaching the first jump marker. Um, there's two circuits in this cave. Uh, the main line runs along the left side of the system and then there's two circuits that you can jump off to. Uh, the first circuit is uh, relatively smaller than the second circuit. Um, but uh, um, like I said, they're both marked off with jump markers. Uh, finding that secondary line is not the easiest. Um, obviously, if you're cave certified and if you've ever wanted to come dive here, um, just be aware that um, uh, if you're swimming in to the cave, the jumps uh, are going to be to the right, and the, both circuits are on the right side of the main line. Uh, but you have to swim uh, quite a ways to find the jump. Uh, the secondary line uh, and they're a little bit difficult to find um, especially because they're underneath kind of like an overhang um, but once you uh, once you get to the line it's you know it's relatively easy to tie off um, however what I should mention that there is uh, quite a bit of silt in this cave and it's stirred up pretty easily um, especially when looking for uh, those secondary lines to make your second to make your tie-offs, um, it gets pretty narrow on the overhang. Um, so you kind of you have to kind of go head down, swim underneath the overhang, uh, you know, and then swim in. But it's it's not very tall in there, and the bottom is is very very silty. We, um, in uh, our attempt, our first attempt to find that first jump, uh, to find that line, it uh, stirred it up quite a bit, to be honest. Uh, we had to return to the main line and then uh, go, you know, give it a second go at it um, in a different direction away from uh, the mess we had made. Uh, but. We did find it, um, and we were much careful, much more careful, so I didn't go on um, and had no issues then. 
um, completed that circuit, uh, you come back out onto the main line, and then, you know, obviously once you've reached the dead end, you have to jump over back to the main line. Uh, there's uh, the first jump marker, uh, which uh, would lead to that first circuit, um, but I'm going to bypass that because I didn't get video of that first circuit. Um, and we're going to jump over to the next circuit. So that line right there showed where we went in, and this is the uh, the direction that we went and the the uh, what we traversed uh, through that second circuit. Um, so you saw the the tie off there onto that secondary line on the second circuit, and uh, we're just working our way in here. Um, that's me. Uh, I was diving with uh, Charlie, uh, the same guy that I did my cave class with, and um, he volunteered to take the camera from me. Uh, he said that he felt I should get some video of myself going through the caves and I'm always videoing everyone else. And uh, so I gave him the camera and I do appreciate him um, getting the video of me. I, I very rarely get to, to see myself in the water unless I set it up that way to kind of self-evaluate. Uh, speaking of self-evaluating, uh, I'm not very pleased with my frog kicking going on here today. Um, I don't know if maybe I was tired or... Uh, I don't remember. I do remember that, um, uh, as you can see, it's, it's very narrow there it's not uh, you don't have a whole lot of room between the silt and the ceiling and um, I remember uh, my heels hitting the top a couple times you'll probably see it in the video and I started extending my legs a little bit more which I think brought my fin tips down a little bit causing that little bit of a, a downward frog kick um, you know, once again, not, not, very, not very pleased with my performance here. Um, but nonetheless, uh, this second circuit was very, very cool. A um, lot of different formations. Um, this was my first uh, and Charlie's first uh, real uh, cave dive after certification. Um, you know, I, prior to this, I had done a handful of dives at Paquette, and uh, I think I mentioned in my previous videos that Paquette is is man-made. You know, so it, it's it's very symmetrical. It's uh, very familiar as far as how you know uh, things are are built. Um, so uh, it's there is some famili familiarity that can occur. Um, you know, similar to a building where you can uh, determine one room from another. Um, here, uh, there are no straight lines. It's everything is formed by flowing water, and you'll see a lot of um, very uh, strange formations uh, on the walls and different uh, little crevices and holes that lead nowhere. Um, you know, it's very, it's very easy to get turned around and to uh, lose your bearings. Um, there's no symmetry in here. It's all very, you know, very chaotic in the way uh, that it was formed. Uh, no rhyme or reason whatsoever. Um, I think you saw there. I hit my my heels and then picked my head up and hit my head on the ceiling. Um, you know, once again things to work on um, let's see very very cool um, circuit here um, I, I, I really enjoyed this one uh, we did this one twice as a matter of fact I, th I think this was the second time we went in here um, there I'm covering my lights just to make sure that Charlie's still behind me um, Sometimes you can kind of tuck your head underneath, you know, down and look between your knees, but given how narrow this was, I didn't want to risk silting it up or anything, so 
covering the lights is the easiest thing to do. And he's he was good about keeping the light uh, underneath me or in front of me, so it was easy to determine that he was there. Uh, and of course, you know, I have uh, my video light and my my narrow beam light on, so he uh, it's easy to signal him. Um, the cave system um, is. I mean, the location is easily and readily uh, available or searchable online. Um, I don't suggest you going there if uh, uh, you haven't been there before with someone who's been there. Um, like I said, it is uh, a tight squeeze in and a tight squeeze out, and it is extremely silty, uh, not a place you want to uh, you know, you want to uh, take any risks at. Um, our intention here um, on this second dive was to uh, complete the second circuit because we, we didn't complete it on the first attempt. Uh, on the first dive, like I said, we went and did the first circuit, jumped over, went around, jumped back onto the main line, continued down the cave system, found the third jump, which is the entrance to, uh, or the marker to the second circuit, and then we went in um, and then worked our way around. Um, obviously, we knew that uh, there was going to be a jump going uh, back to the main line but you know uh, not having been there before and not having marked the circuit off to measure the distance um, we uh, turned to dive once uh, once we hit our thirds um, so once we came back uh, we decided to uh, bypass that first circuit and continue on uh, to complete this one. So, uh, it turns out we never found the jump, um, which, you know, uh, in of itself goes to show you how following the rules um, can oftentimes, probably always, save your life. Because uh, had we continued that first dive uh, and not found the um, the you know the the main line off of the, the end of the secondary line uh, it probably would have been a very stressful situation um, but here we have plenty of air it's our second dive We've got fresh tanks and we follow this line all the way uh, to the end um, once we we got to where the line ended um, there was a very large opening that continued on so I tied off an, uh, another uh, spool and we we followed through that that pretty big tunnel I mean it was big enough for like two or three people to fit through so I wasn't concerned about you know wedging myself somewhere I shouldn't be going um, and we ended up in a large large room a very large open area uh, we talked to Tammy uh, if this is your first time here uh, Tammy Thompson from um, Madison uh, certified both of us and uh, she happened to be there that day uh, doing another class and she thinks we may have gone through a bypass tunnel that isn't roped off um, but I, I don't know, to be honest. So here, I signal Charlie to come over because I see this huge catfish. Now, I don't know how big catfish get, but this thing looked like it belonged in prehistoric times. It was massive. Really hard to tell. He's about probably 30 feet away from me, 30, at least 30 feet away. 
and he looks fairly large with my super wide um, GoPro, you know, super view setting on it. So just imagine how big he was. I would guess he was somewhere in like four feet or so. Uh, anyhow, uh, that little circle area with the question mark is where I believe we went through. That's what Tammy uh, mentioned. She thinks that um, yeah, we possibly found that little bypass tunnel into the main tunnel that goes down to about 280 feet or something. I don't know. It's around 300 feet. Um, but I think we came out uh, at a much greater depth, right around like 60 feet or so. Uh, so when we were looking around for the line that goes around the, the, the perimeter of that, the top of that, that tube, uh, we couldn't find it. Um, I couldn't remember what depth it was at. I think it's right around 40 or 50 feet, but don't quote me on that. Um, but after a few minutes of just kind of looking around, um, just kind of in awe of how big it was and how strange the formations were, we decided to, to call it quits and turned around. Um, so here's the exit. As you can see, you don't really have to do much to get out. It, uh, it That current blows you out pretty quickly. If you're listening uh, carefully, I... Uh, <laughs> Kind of have a little fun with it and start yelling a little bit here as I'm getting shot out the cave and frantically looking for something to grab onto because I had to undo the reel. Um, in any case, a uh, very fantastic place to dive. I really like coming here. I plan to go back many, many more times. Um, explore the big a little bit more and possibly go back. That we, that we went through that wasn't roped off. Um, really, really fun place to dive. Uh, it's diveable all year long. Uh, obviously, looking at the, the rainfall and all and so on, I'm just going to dictate you know, how good the visibility is. Great time. Can't wait to go back. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.